What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts. In this video we're going to be making gel candles. For those of you that aren't familiar with what gel candles actually are, let's take a second to appreciate some of the awesome work I found from around the web. So gel candles are something that I'm asked about quite often. The process is fairly simple, but before we get to that, let's talk about what gel wax actually is. So technically it's not even actually a wax. It's a combination of mineral oil and polymer resin. Those two come together to make a really spongy gel-like substance, and it actually does quite well in candles, so people just call it a wax. So the biggest question I always get is, what type of gel wax should I buy? Well, the short answer is, it doesn't really matter. I say that because it's all the same. Uh, the patent for gel wax is held by a company called Penrico, and they're certainly not going to release their patent. So they're the only ones authorized to make it, but they do license it to other companies. So you can buy it from several different places, but no matter where you buy it from, you're buying Penrico gel wax. So buy it at Nature's Garden, buy it at Hobby Lobby, buy it at Michael's, you're getting the same thing. The only distinction is there are actually three different types of gel wax. Uh, you've got low density, medium density, and high density. And each of those serves a different purpose. The low density is most commonly what you'll see in the uh, decorative dessert candles where it looks like they've got the, uh, the syrup on top. The medium density is generally a catch-all. It's what you'll see mostly in candles, but it can be used for other applications. And the high density is usually what you see in the embeds. If you've ever seen like a, a drink candle that's got the ice cubes, those ice cubes are made out of the high density gel wax. Now because you can use a medium density for just about everything, the low density and the high density aren't as popular. There's only just a handful of places that actually sell those. And generally if you have a gel wax that isn't labeled either way, you can generally assume that it is a medium density gel wax. So we'll talk more about the gel in just a second, but next let's talk about the additional components that actually go into building our candle. Uh, the first of which is going to be our fragrance oil. Just like any other candle, if we're going to make a candle, we want it to smell good. So you can add fragrance oil to a gel candle. It's just a few things you need to know about it. Uh, the type of fragrance oil that you pick is going to matter. So there's a few things we need to consider. First is going to be the flash point of that fragrance oil. This gel candle is going to burn a lot hotter than a soy or paraffin wax candle. So if you use a fragrance oil with a really low flash point, it could cause some stability issues, it may end up ultimately being a fire hazard. So as a general rule, you want to choose a fragrance oil that's going to have a flash point over 170. And next is going to be the polarity of that fragrance oil. Uh, some fragrance oils just don't mix well with gel wax, uh, whether it's the solvents that are used in them, the different type of aroma oils or essential oils that are used in that fragrance oil. Just for whatever reason, they don't like to mix well with the gel wax. A lot of companies will actually tell you that on their website, whether or not that fragrance oil is compatible with gel wax, but some don't. For the ones that don't, you can actually do your own tests at home. The easiest way to do that is just buy some food grade mineral oil. This is actually a mineral oil laxative that I got from Target. It'll work great. We're really doing nothing more than mixing the two to see how well they mix. The ratios for that are going to be three parts mineral oil, one part fragrance oil. We're basically going to pour the two together, stir them up, see how well they look together. I actually tried to show this on video it doesn't show it all on video. What actually happens is the fragrance oil will dissolve into these tiny little bubbles. They're almost impossible to see on film. You can actually see them in person though. So I wish there were a better way to describe that or show it. It just doesn't show on film. And really the main issue that's going to cause, it's going to make your gel wax cloudy. So if you're going for that really super transparent look, you definitely want to check the polarity first just to make sure they're going to mix well. The next component is going to be our candle dye. A lot of people do like to color these, especially if you're making drink candles. The answer to this one is really simple. Use liquid candle dye. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Liquid candle dye is the only dye that's going to work. Uh, dye chips, dye blocks, and powders, they're all paraffin based, and that paraffin wax is not going to dissolve in the gel wax. The next component is going to be our candle jars. Unfortunately, gel wax does have to remain in a container. It's not firm and stable enough to be used in a pillar candle or a votive, so it will have to be made into a container. Uh, really, no special precautions or concerns you have to take when choosing your container. Obviously you want glass because a tin container would defeat the purpose you couldn't actually see what you were actually making your gel candle into. So any approved glass candle container will work just fine. Next component is going to be our wicks. To burn properly, gel wax is going to need to burn a lot hotter than our regular soy and paraffin waxes. Uh, to get that hot, we're really going to need to use a wick with a zinc core. The cotton core and paper core wicks are just not going to get hot enough to actually make this gel wax function. As far as actually picking the right size wick, there aren't too many wick guides that cover gel wax. But a good general rule to follow, find your proper wick size for a paraffin wax in this size container, then go one size up. And last but not least, the most exciting component of these candles is the embeds that we actually use to decorate them with. 
You can get extremely creative with these candles. You can add just about anything inside to decorate them. Only one rule you have to follow, just don't pick anything flammable. It's a candle, you're going to set it on fire. If there's something flammable inside of it, it's going to make a bigger fire than you want. So just pick something that won't burn. That's really all there is to it. We're going to start putting all this together. While we're doing that, we're going to let our wax melt down. We want to bring this up to about 225 degrees. Now the thing about this, it's going to melt at the speed that it melts. Uh, there's really nothing you can do to speed up the melting process. All you're going to do is just scorch it and burn it and cause a lot of smoke. It's not going to melt any faster by putting it on high. It's actually just going to ruin it. So melt it on medium and it's going to take a while but the end result will be worth it. So while that's melting down we're going to go ahead and build our candles. So the first thing we're going to do just like any other candle we're going to get our wick set. We've got our wick set. You want to really make sure you get those straight from all angles because this gel wax is transparent so if your wick's not straight you're definitely going to be able to notice it. So now we can add our decorations. So for our first one we're just going to do sand and some seashells. Uh, beach scenes are incredibly popular. Now we're going to go and add our seashells. Now we really want it as far away from the wick as we can. Depending on what type of embed you're using it's not always going to be possible. So we've got our beach scene set up. Now for the next one, like I said, you can use just about anything. So to decorate this one, I'm just going to use some strings of beads that I got from Michaels. I think I got these on clearance. These were like a dollar a piece. And we're basically just going to take a skewer. We're going to let these drape to the bottom and we're going to suspend them with the skewer so they're kind of floating in the gel wax. Probably get one more in there. And again, some of those are fairly close to the wick can't always be helped. These are mostly for decoration. You don't really figure that the person's actually going to burn this entire candle. Be nice if we can get everything out of the way so they could, but to decorate how I want it, it can't always be helped. So we've got our embed set. The sand and the seashells are obviously non-flammable. These are glass beads. They're not flammable. The only thing I have to worry about is the string that's in the glass beads. So what I've done before I set these, I actually took a slip knot, tied it to the bottom, ran it through. So once this is set, I can actually just clip that and I'll be able to slide that string straight out. So the plastic string won't be left in there. The only thing left in my gel wax will be my glass beads. So we've got everything set up. Now we're just going to wait for our gel wax to melt down. So our gel is completely melted down. It's completely liquid. Um, again, that's going to take a while. The two pounds that I have in here took about 25 minutes to completely liquefy and melt down and get up to temperature. Wish there was a way to rectify that, but there's really nothing you can do to speed it up. If you try to get it any hotter than that, you're just going to burn it. So really all we can do is wait it out, but the end results are going to be worth it. So now we're at 225, we're going to go and add our fragrance oil. Gel wax can only hold up to a 3% fragrance load, which is going to be a half an ounce per pound of gel wax. Now we're adding it hot, generally in soy or paraffin. You wouldn't want to add your fragrance oil at 225 because you're going to have a lot of burn off. Unfortunately, in order to get that to mix very well with the gel wax, we're going to have to pour it while it's that hot. You are going to have some burn off. But again, it's just one of the things that you have to deal with. So we're going to mix that up. We don't want to mix it too vigorously. We don't want to introduce any bubbles because that is the biggest problem with gel wax is the bubbles that could form after we pour. So we just want to try to eliminate that as much as we can along the way. This will also take a minute because you want to get it mixed very well, but you also don't want to do it too vigorously or fast. So just nice and slow, barely agitating the gel wax. Okay, once it looks like it's mixed well, we're just going to let it sit. We're going to let this cool to 200 degrees and then we're going to pour our candles. Again, much higher temperatures than most of us are used to working with, but if we want this gel wax to act right, we've got to use those higher temperatures. So we have cooled to 200 degrees. Now we are ready to pour our first candle. For the first one, we're going to do our beads. We want to tilt the jar just a little bit. We don't want to pour that wax straight into the bottom. That will cause it to splash around a little bit and aerate. So really we want to kind of hit the side and just let it run down. Kind of like pouring a beer out of a keg. Like I can see I've got a few bubbles trapped. I'm going to move things around just a bit, just so those can get free. You can probably see them rising up through the top from there. Looks like most of the major bubbles are gone. A lot of the smaller ones are still going to work their way to the top. So now we can go and get everything lined up. Now we're just going to leave that alone and let it set up. Now for our beach candle. Uh, it's the ocean, so we want it to be a little bit blue. So we're going to add a little bit of candle dye. Again, you can only use liquid candle dye. The great thing about color and gel wax 
is you can immediately see what color it's going to be. It's not like soy or paraffin where it's going to be darker while it's liquid and once it dries it's going to be a much lighter shade. Pretty much what you see with gel wax is what you're going to get. And a little bit goes a long way. So for this pound, to get our ocean blue, we're just going to add one drop of blue for now. And just that one drop per pound is going to give us the perfect color blue. So now we're ready to pour our beach candle again. We're going to have to tilt it to the side a little bit. Uh, the, some of that might slide around. So I've got a couple of uh, wooden skewers on hand. I can kind of straighten things up a little bit if they do get out of line. Just kind of let it run down the side so that it doesn't bore out a hole in our sand at the bottom. And pouring at the higher temperature and some of the other precautions that we've taken. It is going to help eliminate the bubbles to some degree. But if you're going to work with gel wax, you just need to go ahead and accept that you're going to have bubbles. Uh, there's nothing you can really do to eliminate every single bubble. The good thing is with a lot of the applications that gel wax is used for, sometimes bubbles are acceptable. Uh, for instance, if you're making... Uh, a drink candle such as soda or beer, uh, the bubbles that are going to be left in there, you can just easily say that that's carbonation. Uh, the bubbles that are going to be left in my beach candle, we can just say that that's ocean sea foam. We try to eliminate them as much as we can, but you're going to have some. There's just not a whole lot you can do about it. So that everything's good. We're going to go ahead and uh, leave these alone, let these set up. We'll be back in a few hours and we'll be ready to introduce these as candles. So it's been about four hours. Our gel candles have completely dried. Now, just like any other candle, we're going to take the wick bars off, trim the wicks, and they'll be done. Now, we just throw the lids on them, and we're done. Let's zoom in and check out how these look. And that's really all there is to gel candles. Other than the pouring temperatures and a few limitations on the supplies that we can use in conjunction with the gel wax, it's really no different than pouring any other candle. And as an added benefit, the gel is transparent, which allows us to be a lot more creative with our candle creations. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Check out my playlist for more great candle making tips and tricks. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you next time.